Hey guys, we are on our final transformation for this chapter, and this one is dilations. So if you think about like a, a small object, like really minuscule, microscopic, a microscope would enlarge that object um, and make it so that you can see it. And so something where it's the same object, but we're seeing it at a bigger size is kind of an example of what a dilation would look like. Um, so important thing to know that um, first of all we're on page 465 so you can follow along on page 465 but um, a dilation is kind of similar to a scale drawing so we use a scale factor to either enlarge or reduce a figure proportionately now all the other transformations we've done translation or translations reflections and rotations didn't change the size or shape of the object at all those three transformations only change the position of the object whereas a dilation actually changes the size and shape of the object so the only one that changes the actual size it'll still be the same shape but it'll enlarge it or shrink it um, so the scale factor if the scale factor is your scale factor could be a number bigger than one or a number less than one between zero and one so if the scale factor is bigger than one then we enlarge the image. Um, if the scale factor is between 0 and 1, then the image actually gets smaller. If the scale factor is equal to 1, then it's the exact same size. So I don't know why you would need that, but it is possible. Um, again, the scale factor of a dilation is shown over here. So we have A, B, C, and then we still use A prime, B prime, and C prime to show our image. So pre-image, image, still the same. But this one has a scale factor of 2. So it's just twice as large as this. If this side is 1 centimeter, then this side is 2 centimeters. If this is 2, then this is 4. So that's kind of what that looks like here. So this triangle here, RST is dilated. In this case, this is the pre-image and this is the image. So the image is smaller. So our scale factor, if it gets smaller, then our scale factor is going to be between 0 and 1. It will be a fraction. Okay. So this one was actually a reduction. It was not enlarged. Um, if we are going to do this on a coordinate plane, then it's actually pretty simple. Now, this dilation, this transformation, will enlarge or reduce a scale factor, but it's also relative to a certain point called the center of dilation. So this is important to know, is that we do have a center of dilation. When the center of dilation in the coordinate plane is the origin, each coordinate of the pre-image is just multiplied by the scale factor. So um, if we look at variables, x, y is just k, x, k, y, whatever that scale factor is, we would multiply it. So here I have the point 1, 1. If the scale factor is 2, then I just multiply 1, 1 by 2, and that's 2, 2. Here this point is 3, 1. Multiply that by 2, that's 6, 2. So you really are just multiplying each point. So that is if the center of dilation is the origin. Now, the values of the scale factor determine whether it's an enlargement or reduction or if the dilation does not alter the size. So if the scale factor um, is greater than 1, then this makes the image larger than the original. If, excuse me, the scale factor, and this is on page 4, um, we're already on page 467, if the scale factor is between 0 and 1, so it can't be negative, so just less than 1 and um, greater than zero, so in this case one half, then it's like half the size of the original. And a dilation with a scale factor of k is the exact same. The original and the image, the pre-image and the image will be the same thing. So not too much to think about there. Um, but it's really pretty basic. If it's on the coordinate plane and the center of dilation is the origin, then you just multiply each point by that scale factor. The x and the y get multiplied by the scale factor. So if there's a triangle with these vertices and we want to graph the figure, um, the image after the dilation with a scale factor of 2, really guys, all you have to do is multiply each of the coordinates, both the x and the y, by 2. 
So negative 2, 1 gets multiplied by 2, negative 4, 5, and all these get multiplied by 2. So we get um, here negative, negative 4, 2. For that one, we get, um, let's see, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, 10 for this one, and we get, I don't know why it makes me type it like this, 6, 4 for this one. Okay, oop, I didn't have parentheses, so it's not accepting my answer. But you can fill those in. So now step two, here we have the coordinates of the original graph, and if I want to graph the, um, the new one, then we can just graph those new points here. So I'm just going to do it this way. It'll be easier. Negative 4, 2 is right here. Negative 8, 10 is up here. And 6, 4 is over here. So my new triangle, I'm not using a stylus, so this is a little bit, oh, wow, right there. So you can see that it's going to be twice the size of the original blue one. I'll have to get the stylus before I continue on here. So you guys try the one on page 468 at the bottom. Try that check problem on 468, and then we will move on and keep going here. Okay, sorry if this is a little sketchy. I had to, um, my computer was acting up. Anyway, look at page 469 now for the next example. So this triangle has these vertices, and this one has a scale factor of 1 half. So what happens when the scale factor is 1 half? Does the size of the original get larger or smaller in this case? So in this case, when the, when the um, scale factor is less than 1, then it's actually going to get smaller. So all we're going to do is multiply each of these by 1 half. It's really that easy. You're just multiplying each coordinate by 1 half, and then we're going to graph each of these. So the original is, here's my original JKL graphed for us, and then the new JKL is 1 and a half, 4. So now this graph is made nicely for us. So 1 and a half, 4 is right there. Um, 5, 3 is right here, and 4, 1, 4, 1 is right there, I think. So here is, I have my stylus now, it's slightly better. Here is the new one, and again, it's half the size. So we're really only going to be, and you guys can try the one on page 469, that one's by a scale factor of one-third, okay? But we're really only going to be graphing ones where the center of dilation is the origin, so all your literally all you're doing is just multiplying the coordinates by the scale factor and then graphing it. So the last one, the last thing you're going to have to do is describe the dilation. So if you go to page 470, example 3, we want to know, first of all, the, the pre-image is this one in blue, and then the image is this one here. So before we do anything, you guys should be able to figure out that the scale factor is a number smaller than 1 because my image is smaller so it's a reduction, not an enlargement. So that means that the scale factor is going to be smaller than 1. Um, but we're going to also write this in coordinate notation. So the way we're going to write this in coordinate notation is we are going to write the point. So A is the point 2, 4. Okay. B is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, negative 2. And C is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, negative 4. And then write the coordinates of the image. So A prime is 1, 2, B prime is 2, negative 1, and C prime is negative 2, negative 2. So what happens to each of these points from here to here? Well, the original is x, y, and what are we multiplying this by? to get this, and this by to get this. Well, it's really half. Each of these is half of this, right? So we're multiplying x by 1 half and y by 1 half. These numbers in front should be exactly the same. So the scale factor is the same for x and y. So our coordinate notation then is just this. So this is how you would write a dilation in coordinate notation. x, y arrow, and then whatever the scale factor is, times x, y. So see if you can figure out the one on the bottom of page 470. That one is an enlargement, so the scale factor should be bigger than one. Um, and write that in coordinate notation, and that's all we've got for this section. So make sure I see all three check problems done for this um, assignment for you to receive full credits. And that is 
all we've got for chapter eight. All right, talk to you later.